get out there and make something that matters. Make something that matters. Make something that matters. Make something that matters. Make something. Make something. Make something. Make something that matters. That matters. Matters. That matters. That matters. 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 Get out there and make something that matters. This is perhaps the single most defining sentence when it comes to my work and what I could align myself to. And for those who don't know, it is a paraphrased line from one of my favorite authors, the OG of marketing, Seth Godin. Originally, he said something along the lines of, make work that matters for people who care. And something I just absolutely adore about that line, much like the rest of his advice about people, culture, and marketing, is that it works on so many different levels. From a marketing perspective, he's talking more in the context around speaking to you know, small specific personas when it comes to how to speak to your audience. And it's this idea that focusing on the right thing to make for the right person is tremendously valuable in not only the reception of that thing, but also in cultivating the right people to talk to in the first place and finding you know, the right people to be part of your tribe. And I love that idea. It's tremendously deep and valuable and something I can talk about for many, many videos in length because it is something that I have top of mind and strive towards whenever I make anything of importance. However, as I've applied this idea to many more areas of my life, you know, more than anything else, make something that matters, as I say at the end of every video, is really me speaking to one thing in particular, and that is the internal war and the tension and the struggle that I have within myself as both an artist and a content creator. Now, if you're a creative in today's world, you know, when you talk about what you do, do you call the things that you make content or art? And I'm not just talking about semantics here, right? Both of these two things feel different. You know, sometimes they may conflate, and in reality, the confluence of both of these things is now natural and needed, but there is a emotional and psychological shift that occurs, at least for me, when it comes to thinking about these two things. As an artist, especially one who has been an artist for you know, his entire life across many different mediums of art and design throughout the almost two decades of being a professional creative, I, perhaps more than most, identify with the things that I make as mostly art. When I'm obsessing over the presentation of how a title is kerned, or the finessing of the intricacies of a Bezier curve, or whether I am capturing a moment in time to remember it forever with my camera, or I'm documenting an experience to share with another, much of the things that I make have the energy of self-expression, which in that state have no quantifiable method of measurement. That is, of course, until it gets turned into content. The word content used to have a negative connotation in my mind. At least it did, you know, at least a few years ago. But perhaps over time, you know, like a weird bodily growth or a dull ache, you kind of just get used to it. But still, to call me a content creator still causes an involuntary bodily reaction and a slight twinge of my face. But content is needed. It is essential, especially in today's world, and especially more so if I'm to continue doing what I love doing, which is making art. Content is what keeps my financial independence alive. It is what creates the revenue that drives the freedom to keep making more art. And this is where the internal tension I have comes into play. Make something that matters applies to both art and content. See, art in the definition of it being a method of self-expression inherently has no attunement to commercial success. It is of the self and therefore by nature, not of anyone else. Therefore, as it exists in its purest form, it cannot be of commercial value, nor can it be possibly objectively measured. Content, on the other hand, is natively born of commercial value. 
You know, content is measurable. Content is the delivery mechanism, the context, the wrapping that surrounds the work. It is the art gallery, the Instagrams of the world, the e-commerce platform that surrounds the work and gives the content meaning and measure. Sometimes the work is the art itself. In this way, the art becomes the content by the way of having context and it being shared in some way. You know, when art is content, it has a focus, it has an intention and usually a commercial gain by way of financial or reputational value. And in this way, it feels different. Art in its purest form feels different to content, at least for me it does. To me, art feels free. You know, the idea of using my camera to document a slice of life or you know, going out to create something without the pretense of performance or the wrapper that I may surround it with in the future is really important to me. The feeling of feeling free to create whatever I want, whenever I want, that to me is art in the truest form of self-expression, regardless of the medium that I decide to engage in. Content, on the other hand, feels like a job. It feels like a means to an end. You know, the bittersweet nature of serotonin hits after every single step of the social media hamster wheel. But it is a necessary job, an important one. There is tremendous value in creating videos like this and, you know, other knowledge based topics that you, my audience, are potentially willing to listen to and will hopefully gain some value out of. Both my art and my content are things that matter to me and by extension, hopefully things that matter to you if I've done my job right. And for me lately, I've definitely been losing my way just a little bit when it comes to the balance of art and content. You know, the numbers are an addicting game regardless of how much we try to deny it. And I think that recently I've been diving too hard into the numbers in an effort to serve you, my audience, rather than serving myself through expressing my own art. And I know I shouldn't be so hard on myself because you see this all the time in everyone, right? You see creators with hugely inflated numbers and they're good content creators, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're good artists. And you see the inverse too, people who can you know, create fantastic art and who are immensely amazing at the craft and have fantastic work, but they're terrible at packaging it up and marketing it in some way. And in that way, they are bad content creators. It's this duality of being, this tension and this back and forth between art and content that is at the heart of what the video ending of Make Something That Matters is all about. In art, making something that matters to you and that gives you life and vitality in the work that you create for yourself and in the content, making something of value for others and wrapping the work around the context relevant to where everyone might consume it. You know, food for thought. This is a, a very a deep philosophical discussion for you creatives who sit in the middle and are attached to both the art world and the content world, and I hope that you found this video useful. All right, and I'll see you in the next one, but of course, get out there and make something that matters. Peace.